Trans Logic. I'm Bradley Hasemeyer. You know, these days you're more likely to boot up your car rather than just start it up. You got computers and sensors and actuators, and every time you go for a drive, you're generating tons of data. But what do you do with all that data? We've come to Boston to find out. All right, so today we're here with Josh Siegel, the creator of Carno. Thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. All right, let's get right into it. What is Carno? Well, Carno is uh, hardware and software that digitally mirrors your car in the cloud. And what that means is it takes all this data that's talking between computer modules in your car and basically turns your car into a cell phone that puts all this data on the internet so that you can run applications using that data. Can I like my car? Can I friend other cars? You can compare your car with your neighbors. You can see how your car is doing. You can see your car's timeline, how your car's physical health is, what radio stations do people typically listen to in your car. Obviously, if you're the driver, it tells you a lot about your own habits as well. And you guys get this information from a module that you actually created. Yes. Plugged into your diagnostic port. Every car after model year 1996 has it. It's called onboard diagnostic diagnostics version 2. That's emissions related data. But beyond that, manufacturers have their own networks that they install in vehicles. So if you look at a typical 2011 or 2012 vehicle now, it might have 12, 16, even 20 computers in it. So walk me through some of the tasks that you guys can do now. We can access all the data on the vehicle network right now, but in addition to that, we can perform a lot of actuation. We can mimic button presses, turning lights on or turning lights off, putting the electronic parking brake on or off. Stuff uh, that you could normally do already from in the car, from the driver's seat. Yeah, but you can do that from your smartphone. Or you can do it from a tablet or you can do it very remotely. You could have someone across the country rolling your windows up or down if you give them permission to. And then ultimately what we do is we build towards these more specific commands like tuning your radio station as you drive. Oh. So that when you go out of one signal area, you come into another. You can customize anything to suit your needs. So you can play with the speedometer, the tachometer. You can put on all the lights on the instrument panel at the same time. There's now, when really you say sorry, no, no, when you say play with the speedometer and play with the tachometer, what does that mean? It means that if you want it to display some value, you can choose the value to have it displayed. People get their home computers hacked all the time. Is there a security threat with cars? I, I don't think that I would call it a security threat so much as a security issue. A lot of the technology in vehicles today is brought forward from technology in the early to mid 1980s when these networks were first implemented. <laughs> okay, so a little lag there. Fundamentally, there's no encryption on any of these modules. It's anything on the network you can intercept. That said, it typically requires physical access to pull information off of or to put information onto this vehicle. You couldn't just pull up next to a car, okay, it's an Audi with Wi Fi, and hack into its system. The answer is not very likely. These wireless networks and vehicles typically aren't bridged to these safety-critical, mission-critical networks. You're not going to be able to do anything with brakes or throttle okay. or anything like that. But something like a Blue Link, maybe, or like an OnStar, those can link those services, right? Sure, those can, and those have a network segment, they have a server segment. It's incredibly difficult to spoof. We're not talking about short-range wireless here, we're talking more about would you be able to hack into OnStar? It is possible, but it's highly unlikely and certainly not probable. Certainly, and I think that that's a fair way to put it. So you guys are going to offer a number of different apps. Is this going to be like Apple's App Store, where it's crowdsourced and people can throw in different? Absolutely. So we have a developer program. Uh, people can sign up now, and they'll use our RESTful API to build their applications, and then users can purchase either one-time fee free apps or monthly subscriptions. So now with all these telematics and computers in the cars, are there gonna be these end user agreements that you're gonna to have to sign when you go to the dealership for data sharing and all that? Any car lease that you sign now, uh, anytime you purchase a car, you sign a contract saying that you will not reverse engineer, you will not tamper with these systems, that you elect to share data with their servers. This gets into right to repair, which is basically drivers saying, hey, this data's in my vehicle, I know manufacturers know what to do with it, why can't I see what they see? Mm. And, and we believe that users should be able to access everything. Everything's computer controlled. By getting into those computers, you can make your car into your car. It could be kind of like the Matrix when they call up and they're like, I need to know judo, but I could call you up and be like, I need more performance in my car, and you're like, boop, 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 boop. Exactly, okay, you just go, dial it and in. I'm like, when I'm gone all of a sudden. Yeah, it's the future of hot rodding. Okay, so maybe using your smartphone to roll down your windows isn't anything brand new, but 
those telematics systems are closed to the public. What Carnot is doing is creating an open platform for innumerable apps. That's pretty exciting. Unlimited apps, crowdsourcing, car technology. Yeah, we like that. All right, for Translogic, I'm Bradley Hasemeyer. See you next time.